When a market's down, that's the biggest opportunity to expand market share. Uh, your, your business will literally four, five, six X when the market resurges and it, and it resurges 110% of the time. It never not resurges. Do you want to sell for more money faster or less money slower? It's your choice. And I'm totally fine either way you go. But if I have to come unlock doors, show property, write offers, negotiate, if I have to work both sides of this deal, then my commission rate is this much higher because I'm not going to work for free. It's nothing to worry about at all. There's unlimited business for each and every one of you. If you're out there building your business, you'll be just fine. If you're not building your business, then you're not going to be fine anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky Karu. Okay, the man, the legend, the myth, Ricky, thank you so much for uh, jumping on here. So I know, Jackie, you had a couple of quick words about Rick Yeah, looking him up and, and knowing a little bit about Ricky, uh, we are so grateful for the gift of your time today. Um, you know, he's a, a top real estate agent in Alabama, been in the business since 2002, and uh, the number one real estate um, agent in the Gulf Coast since 2014 and that is so amazing and so we are so grateful we got a full house here mm -hmm. packed house we've been working up to this ricky thank you so much for the gift of your time for any of you there may be one of you that doesn't know ricky but he runs the fastest coaching organization zero to diamonds for real estate agents just providing value and content and he provides amazing value to his clients. So, hey, Ricky, if you don't mind, could you share a little bit about yourself? And let's jump right into our content, why this NAR settlement is one of the best things that ever happened to real estate agents and how to get more listings. Ricky Carruth. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for all that, man. That was that was too much stuff. Cool. No, I've been in real estate since 2002. You know, back that I'm gonna call that the caveman days. <laughs> there wasn't nothing going on. Mm -hmm. It was uh, emails, phone calls, and postcards. That's all we had. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have social media. We didn't have Zillow. We didn't have AI. We didn't have nothing. We didn't have electronic signatures. We had to fax contracts back and forth. And by the time it got back to us, after we negotiated <laughs> through the agent to the client, back to my client around and around, the executed contract was literally unlegible. It was, it was like this big on a, on a eight by, well, we actually had like uh what was it? Like eight and a half by 13 <laughs> was the contracts back then. So I guess I'm a dinosaur. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. It's weird to say that. I feel like I'm 12 years old. Um, but yeah, I got in real estate when I was 20. And uh, man, it's been a ride because I went through 2008. Made a bunch, lost it. That was fun. Uh, and that's when I learned everything I needed to know, honestly. And then I came back to just absolutely crush it. I got to where I was selling 100 properties a year as a single agent. I did that eight years in a row. I was picking up 100, 100 listings a year. Uh, really more than that. And um, I did it a very unique a unique way, in my opinion, because I didn't really go after the deal. I'm more focused on the person. I don't really care if someone I talk to is looking to do a deal today or not. I'm trying to build my career. I'm trying to stack as many deals into a 20, 30 year period as I possibly can, or however long I'm planning on doing real estate. That's my goal. My goal is not to have this crazy 2024, is to have this crazy 2028. And that's where the biggest opportunity is right now, because when a market's down, that's the biggest opportunity to expand market share. And nobody can ever stop you from expanding market share. No one can stop you from doing that at any time. So why is, right, why is when the market down the best time? Because a lot of people say, well, agents are backing off, so that's a good time to gobble it. Well, it's there anyway, regardless if agents are trying to go after it or if the market's good, bad, or the ugly. But the cool thing is, is that when you adjust your business to a slow market, your market, your, your, your business explodes when the market rebounds. We're going to have this massive rebound. We're down like 15% of my market uh, year over year transactions. That's crazy talk because last year was literally 2008 levels. We're lower than 2008 levels right now, which is insanity. 
Um, and in 2008, that's when I got back in the business. And because of what I did in eight, nine, 10, 11, that's why I started selling hundred properties a year starting in 2014. Um, it was all the work I did in eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, that, uh, that put me to where when the market rebounded my see a market when it when it when it re when it re uh explodes let's call it it has the ability to multiply your business you can literally three or four x your business in a market re expansion and it, and when and when a market has a, a massive downturn it only hurts your business it can hurt, hurt your business up to 50 percent i guess um you know, 20, 30%, like if it's a really bad, bad year, like the, like the year we're having right now, it can affect your business negatively. I mean, there's agents doing better than they did last year. Not very many, but a, a, a year like last year, a year like this year can affect your business 10, 20, 30%, but a market re-expansion can literally 4X your business. And you gotta, you gotta understand what the cycles of the, of the market is and what of the industry so you can take advantage of it and also walk into every year with confidence, you know, like 19 was different than 18 and 17, right? And then 20 COVID hit and then 21, we had the boom and 22, we had interest rates come up and 20, every year is a completely different market that we have to adjust to. And so it's not what the changes are. It's the fact that we know there's going to be changes every year. We're going to walk into a different scenario. Now we've got this really slow market election year happening um are they going to lower rates or are they not like it's a different year than last year a next year will be totally different we'll have you know we'll see what happens with the election and then we'll know and then what it and people will adjust to that so every year is different that's the beauty of this business is every year is different now we have the nar stuff every year is different but the cool thing is is the principles never change and that, and that's what i learned when everything crashed in 2008 I learned that closings happen every day. I learned that I've got to value relationships over transactions. And I, I realized that competition just is absolutely an illusion. It doesn't exist whatsoever on any planet in our business, in our industry. Nobody can stop you from building your business at all. So anyway, that's a little bit about me. In 2017, I decided, okay, I made it. I lost it. I came back. I crushed it. I was the number one REMAX agent in Alabama for a long time. I'll write a book just to share this. And uh, the book took off. I started speaking, writing, coaching. That really took off. And two years ago, I stepped out of sales. My dad handles the day-to-day. -day, and I'm just a full-time coach. I just my, my I obsess over helping agents get to a seven-figure income. So that's kind of a little bit about me. I became the world's first completely free coach in 17. I did that for seven years, free coaching for seven years. Um, in December, I started charging. And uh, that's been fun, transitioning. So that's where I'm at, guys. I travel. I just got back from Portland and uh, Vancouver. I did uh, Atlanta right before that. I've been. I did Gold Bar Live with Sir Hant and Altman before that. Um, I did like three or four more before that. So far this year, I'm doing Miami. Where else am I going to be? I've got a couple more coming up. So I enjoy traveling and seeing you guys in person and speaking and stuff. And I'm happy to see what I could do to help you guys today. Wow, that's awesome. Hey, Ricky. I've got a question, Tom. Yeah. So, Ricky, when you take on these agents that want to uh, get to six figures, what do you see? What is the activity set that they're doing, that the ones that make it? What, what are they doing that the others are not? Well, I mean, it's, it's a lot less about real estate and a lot more about personal development. The number one thing behind it, like everybody thinks the skill is to learn how to convert listings, set listing appointments, go get the deals. And that's not it. Like the single skill, the single skill that it really takes to really exponentially build your business is the ability to walk into a listing appointment, number one, not caring if you get it or not. And number two, having the ability to make someone feel comfortable with you within a matter of seconds. So like, for example, there was this agent, who, this was just yesterday and he was asking me about, should he, should he hire somebody? He's hired somebody to make calls. Who should he call? You know, all this stuff. And 
I was like, well, well, yeah, you can hire somebody to make calls and, and do, do all this, but we're just putting a band aid on the problem. And uh, he said that when he calls people, people are just mean and stuff like that. I said, OK, I said, but we're just putting a band aid on the problem. We're not fixing the issue. The issue is, is that when you call people, you haven't developed the skill to make them feel comfortable with you within a matter of seconds. If you can fix that. Now we're now we're getting down to the root of the issue. And now once you fix that, now you hire someone and you you teach them based on that skill. Now you're getting somewhere. There was an agent in Vancouver. There was a Q&A. It was me, Sir Hamp, Pineda. And she said, we're doing 100 deals a year. We have a team. It's three agents. And I feel overwhelmed. There was a point where I didn't feel overwhelmed, but now I feel overwhelmed. Right? What would you do? And Pineda and Sir Hamp's answer was hire people. Hire people, hire people, hire people. More people, more people, more people. And I said, okay, that's great. I said, but here's the thing. You know, I was a single agent. I did 100 deals a year, literally standing on my head. It was no sweat. Me and my assistant, we had our little system down and like it was two deals a week and it was just easy. And I said, you got three people doing 100 deals a year and you're telling me you're overwhelmed. I said, so so I'm going to go a little bit against what they're saying. They're saying higher, higher, higher. And I'm saying that may be the answer. I said, but let me shed a little light here because I think hiring people is just putting a bandaid on it. If we can get to the root of your issue, which is this efficiency in your business. I said, if I could dig in, if I, Ricky, could dig into your business and understand the full mechanics behind the scenes of your business, I could tell you where you're being inefficient because 100 deals for three people should not bog you down. It should be, I did it by myself and it was easy. For three people, it should be like drinking a cup of coffee every, like, that's crazy. So for me, I'm like, that's putting a Band-Aid on it. Let's get to the root of the issue. Let's fix that. And then think about if you fix the issue, got to where you guys could easily be selling two to 300 a year and then hire people. See, I think people are just trying to like add something to put a Band-Aid on the problem when if they would just fix the problem, right? Identify the problem and fix it. Oh my God. Now, now we're, <laughs> now it's a whole nother level. So yeah, the, the first thing is, man, is, is realizing closings happen every day. The people that get the six figure, they start to realize this. It's like, give me some more leads. I need some more deals. It's like deals are happening every single day. Just look in your MLS. Like you're, you want deals to happen. They're happening. They're just happening without you. <laughs> like I can't give you God's like, Hey, I can't give you any more deals. I can't. But any more deals in front of you or maxed out, they're happening every day by the chocolates, more than you can ever handle. You got to realize this and realize that, that the problem is confidence. Like they feel like people that are at that stage under six figure, they don't really know. So most of them don't really know if this is going to work or not. So they, they kind of backtrack. They kind of start to doubt. And they, I'm telling you, it's self-development. And I think it's foolish to execute today on things you already knew. Like you need to wake up every morning and read and then find that little nugget and whatever you're reading. Like I, I, re I read four books at a time and I read a chapter of each book every morning until I find that golden sentence. And then I stop reading because I don't want to I don't want to like gloss over it. I stop and then I think about that all day. The one I found today was in uh, Ed Milet's Power of One, which they were giving away at the event in Vancouver. I was like, I'll take one of those. And he said, your obsessions eventually become your possessions. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Let me let me just completely stop what I'm doing and like think about that for a second. Because, <laughs> for example, like if we, a lot of agents, like in, in Vancouver, I, I was at the little mixer the night before. And, and you now I've talked to a bunch of agents that night and. You know, a lot of them were just like, I want to crush it. I want to do better. And I'm like, okay, so tell me about your business. And they're like, well, you know, I do social media and I got my sphere and I get a bunch of referrals. You know, I'm just not quite where I want to be. I was like, okay, have you ever thought about like trying to reach out to people you don't know to let them know who you are so you can expand your influence and start working with them to buy, help them buy and sell properties? They're like, oh, you know, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, don't want to call people. I don't want to like do any of that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking in the back of my head, maybe you should take up darts or something. I literally told this agent, I was like, do you, do you like real estate? Do you even want to do real estate? <laughs> and she kind of looked at me crazy. Like I, I don't know what she thought was thinking, but I was just like, do you, cause she was like, I don't, I don't really want to call people. And I was like, well, 
<laughs> do you really want to do this? Because the whole premise of the job, right? It's predicated on you talking to people you don't know to help them buy and sell. It's real simple. It's so simple. A caveman could do it. But when I heard that, like your obsessions eventually become your possessions, when people like when she's saying that out of her mouth, I don't want to call. She's obsessing over that. Like it's just like an obsession, you know, that she just doesn't want to call people. Um, and so she's obsessing over that, which is going to make her not call, which is going to make her do less deals, which is going to keep her exactly where she is. And what I said on stage was, is until you get fed up with your circumstances in life where you're just like, I've had enough, I'm going to make a change and I'm going to do it differently from here on out, you're not going to change. You're just going to keep doing the same stuff. Listen, guys, to get where you want to be, okay, the stuff that you, the stuff that you are doing now got you where you are and it's a good place. But it, what you do is you create habits and then your habits create you and it's subconscious. And until you change it, like you use the habits to get to this level. But once you plateau, it's time to throw those habits away. Most of us, do the habits, plateau, and then stay there. Keep doing the same habits that got us there, but we're plateaued and we just stay there. You got to like recognize this pattern and realize that the quickest way up the ladder of success is to, yes, implement these habits, get to that, that level. Where, and as soon as you start plateauing, right, you keep those habits in place, but you start looking for what the next habit's going to be to replace it to get you to the next level. The higher you go up on the ladder, the, the better you get at transitioning from these habits to these habits to the next habits to the next habit. And maybe these habits stay in place for a year, three months, five years. You don't, you don't really know. But like when I got to a million a year, let's say, in, as a real estate agent, that was as high as I could go. I mean, I was, I was maxed out. I'm in Alabama. Like I ain't got no like luxury $4 million homes I'm selling over here. It's, uh, I was maxed out. I can't do anymore. And so I, I had to change my habits. I had to do, do something different. I don't know. I don't remember what the question was, but yeah. I hope that helps. So Ricky, I just have a, a quick question for you. And I appreciate that. That is such a valuable um, thing to remember on, on our mindset. You did an incredible YouTube video on why NAR um, is the best thing that happened to real estate agents. And I would love for you to speak on that um, a little bit. And we can definitely post that YouTube video so people can watch that later. Um, but I'd love for you to comment because that, that's definitely the conversation you're having today, right? The, the, the market will adapt and let's adapt with it and also take greater market share in the future. So can you talk a little bit on that? Yeah. Um, well, first off, market share. I've kind of said this a couple of times and I, I, the more I think about it, the more I realize I don't need to send the message I've been sending with as far as, oh, market share is there. Agents are going to pull back. So it gives us opportunity for more market share. I, I, I want to say it really loudly that there's unlimited market share for all of us at all times. Doesn't matter. What I think is important to note is that when a market is slower, right, a, a market resurgence can, can four or five, six extra business. If you go all in when it's down, when it resurges, it can literally multiply your business. When a market crash happens, it only brings it down 10, 20, 30%. So you can take advantage of the ebbs and flows of the cycles of the industry as we have these huge, you know, 10-year uh, cycles, basically, right? 2008 was a cycle. Now 2022 and three is a cycle. Um, and we'll have another one in, in 10 years, whatever. These cycles are going to happen. And when you've been through a couple of them, like I have, you realize the power of when the market is down, if you can expand your influence, uh, your, your business will literally four, five, six X when the market resurges and it, and it resurges 110% of the time. It never not resurges. So I think that's, that's really key here. I don't want you guys to feel like, oh, because of NAR, it's a great time to build market share. No. It's always a great time to build market share. And now it's better than ever because of the the, the cycles and, and what that can do for your business, you know, long term as the market resurges. I mean, think about it. I got back in in 08. I just crushed, crushed it. I didn't hit 100 deals till 14. So it was six years. Of course, I was doing it by myself, blah, blah, blah. You know, I didn't really, I didn't have a coach. I didn't, you know, I did all this stuff on my own. But nevertheless, like that whole the way it played out and right now I'm telling you is a bigger opportunity than 2008. It's so much bigger. It's, it's not even funny. 
concerning the NAR thing, I was talking to Sirhan backstage. He said they started in December, like where the sellers didn't have to basically offer the buyer agent commission, or at least they were like explaining it to the sellers and some sellers started to stop offering the buyer agent commission. And he said buyer agent commissions for years have kind of been on the downtrend anyway, but he said now they're on the uptrend. Why? Because like if you're in a mixed bag of listings where some are offering buyer commission and some aren't, which is what we're going to see. Okay. We just saw that the judge of the Sitzer Burnett trial has, I think he approved, right? So now it has to go to a higher, you know, higher court for approval and stuff. But like they're heading in the direction. We heard this yesterday that the judge approved this settlement from NAR or there was something that happened that's pushing it closer and closer to becoming a reality as far as the July deadline with removing the buyer agent commission fill from MLS, et cetera. And uh, so like, as we get closer and closer to whatever's going to happen there, when and if this comes into effect, you're going to have a mixed bag. You're going to have sellers who do offer it and sellers who don't offer it. Okay. Now, if they came through and said, okay, all sellers cannot offer it, which is they'll never, they can't do that. It'll never happen. If a seller wants to do something, they can do it. But if they came out and said, okay, no sellers can do it. Now everybody's playing on the same even playing field or now a buyer has no choice. It's the same deal for everyone. They can't offer it. And you have to look at the houses that, you know, there's no buyer agent commission offered. However, it's not how it's going to be. There's going to be some sellers that say, oh, if I don't have to offer it, I'm not going to. And there's going to be some that say, well, I see the value in it. I'm going to offer it. I don't know what the percentage will be. But let's just say it's 50-50, which I don't believe that. I think it's going to be more like 90-10, like 90 that offer it or 80 that offer it and 20 that don't or whatever, something like that. But think about it. If you're a buyer and your agent's like, okay, sign this buyer agency, right? This is what you're going to owe me if I can't get the seller to pay the commission. And they're like, okay, they sign it. They go to see houses and the agent's like, okay, here's the eight houses we're going to see. You know, these five, uh, the buyer agent commission is figured in. You don't have to worry about it. These three, it's not. The buyer's going to be like, well, let's go see the five that it's already figured in. Right. And so they're putting themselves at a competitive disadvantage. And what's going to happen is that it's going to be such an easy conversation because we're going to see data that comes out that shows that when the seller doesn't offer the buyer agent commission, they're going to sell for less money in, in a longer time. It's going to take them longer to make less money. And the ones that do offer it make more money in less time. That's what it's going to show. And so when you go to the sellers and they're like, oh, you know, this buyer agent thing, you're like, okay, listen, you don't have to offer it. That's fine. You, it's totally fine with me. I don't have a problem with you don't offer it. Here's the data though, right? The ones that offer it, here's the ones that offer it. They sold for this amount on average and sold in this amount of time. Here's like 10 examples. Here are properties where they're not offering it that they're still on the market, they haven't sold. And here's a few that sold with no buyer agent commission and here's how long they took and here's what they sold for. And it's gonna be such an easy conversation and all you have to do is say, hey, do you wanna sell for more money faster or less money slower? It's your choice and I'm totally fine either way you go. So you put it in their court, you let them make the decision, whatever they do, what they do, it doesn't matter to me. Listen, here's one thing that's been great for agents is MLS. And the fact that back in the day, we had to actually find the buyers. We had to connect the buyer and the seller and the buyer. We had to go find the buyer. And the MLS offered us this amazing opportunity. There's no way I could do 100 deals a year without it. There's no way I could do 100 deals a year as a single agent if I couldn't leverage listings to every single agent in my market and allow them to go out and sell those listings for me while I spend more time getting more listings. There's no way I could do that, right? However, it is a lost art where we've become accustomed to, and I don't wanna say lazy because we're not, I don't think we're being lazy. There's probably a lot of listing agents who are lazy, but I think a listing agent, you know, I think most listing agents are hard workers and they go out and they list a lot of properties and they don't just sit on the couch and wait on agents to sell their properties. They're, they're working to get more listings. But I think a lost art is actually getting the listing and going and, and finding the buyer. And I think that's an art that could come back to a certain extent, especially when some of these sellers give you a listing with no buyer agent commission uh, involved. 
And that's where I've been training my agents a lot on is how to identify who those buyers could be, how to approach those buyers, where to find those buyers and, you know, work to, to sell the property yourself. Uh, another key point I think to, to make is that, well, if you're the listing agent and you aren't offering a buyer agent commission, now all the buyers are going to come directly to you because they don't want to pay an agent. You're not offering a buyer agent commission. What, what up with that? Because now you're doing all this work with all these buyers not getting paid for it. Well, not so quick. When I do the listing, if you don't want to offer the buyer agent commission, okay, you want to sell for slower and less time, you want to take that route and not offer the buyer agent commission, fine by me. But let me just let you in on this. Here's the commission in that circumstance, right? If, if another agent comes along and the buyer pays their own agent or they negotiate another deal, fine. But if I have to come unlock doors, show property, write offers, negotiate and handle both sides, basically, and whatever the legalities are of your state, if there's dual agency, if it's transaction broker, whatever, if I have to work both sides of this deal, then my commission rate is this much higher because I'm not going to work for free. So anyway, that's just a couple of thoughts. It's really nothing to worry about whatsoever in the world. I think one thing that's scary to be honest, is the fiduciary duty of agents. And we'll get into these situations where this is what I don't like about the, D the DOJ and what they said. They said, well, the buyer can just put it in the offer. That is the, that is the I'm sorry, that, that I don't want to say anything bad here. That, that is just, that's ridiculous because now we're putting what we get paid as one of the terms, the negotiable terms in the in the contract to purchase the house. Whereas now the commission could A, get in the way of the property actually selling or B, get eliminated because the buyer and seller are like, well, the commission is, you know, eight grand, you know, and we're, you know, we're, you know, we're 2000 away on this thing or whatever, or eight grand away or we're 10,000 away on this thing, you know. Uh, they'll come to the agent and say, uh, and then you feel like, well, I'm a fiduciary here. I don't like that. That I see some problems happening on that end, but that's where experience as a, as an agent and a great negotiator and everything comes into play. But my goodness, are we going to be in some sticky situations when it comes to that kind of stuff where the commissions are actually negotiated and put into the purchase agreement and made part of the deal because now it's like the seller and the buyer negotiating, but now we're actually negotiating too. It's like a third party is negotiating, getting getting inserted into the negotiation between the two parties. And now it's like you're negotiating against your client. The DOJ, man, like they really, I mean, the way that it was is, is such a great model for consumers where everyone gets compensated it's not even talked about in the negotiations. Everything's figured in, good to go. Everybody's happy. So th those are my thoughts. But at the end of the day, just to wrap it up and take some questions, it's nothing to worry about at all. There's unlimited business for each and every one of you. If you're doing what you're supposed to do to get out there and uh, meet new people, build your database, expand your influence, connect buyers and sellers, you know, retain people forever, build those lifelong relationships, you know, you know, build your business. If you're out there building your business, you'll be just fine. If you're not building your business, then you're not going to be fine anyway. Thank you so much. I, I, there is a question that got posted. What are your thoughts on the impact of equity firms or huge, you know, big tech companies with millions, even billions that, that have wanted market share for years, including online? They'll never get it. Don't, they'll never get it, right? They'll never get, I don't care what they do. They'll never get it. They'll never get it. You know, like, uh, I, you know, maybe you're referring to the huge institutions that are buying up a lot of rentals. Maybe you're referring to the, you know, flat fee discount brokerages. Um, they'll never get it. It's never going to happen. Here's the thing, right? This is what makes real estate unique. There has to be a one-on-one -on -one conversation for any deal. There has to be a one-on-one -on -one com conversation slash consultation for every, every deal. And because of that, you can't automate that. And you can't really scale it to the, to the like, oh, we'll have a bunch of employees do it. No, they won't take as good of care. They, you know, people, people want, I mean, this is one of the biggest decisions, at least within five years of their life or whatever. 
they want to feel the most comfortable, right? And they're willing to pay to make sure that they're getting the best service. Some people won't, right? It's like any other industry. There's there's people that want free. There's people that want cheap. There's people that want good service. No, no. That's absolutely nothing to, I don't know exactly what you're referring to, but you know. Uh, this Trevor, does that answer your question? Did you want to add to that? Yeah, Ricky, I was thinking more along the lines of some of the online legal firms that are now going to be offering review of the contracts. And like you were referring to earlier, going straight to the listing agent. Yes, the listing agent can, you know, request more for doing more. But in terms of a buyer's agent, you know, say, and I've seen it actually start to happen where, okay, we'll just review that contract for a fee. And then we're just going to go straight to that listing agent. They've got all the information. We can compete yep. better because now we don't have to negotiate like you were also referring to our commission as part of the contract. That's kind of more what I was referring to. Well, the buyers are still paying the lawyer a fee in that scenario, right? Those lawyers aren't going to do that for free, I'm assuming, correct? Right. But I think it's a flat fee more, you know, it doesn't like matter. A it doesn't matter. You pay a flat fee. You can pay a flat fee now to a bro to a, to a buyer agent. There's buyer agency brokerages out there that will charge a flat fee now, right. To do full service. Why don't they, why don't, I mean, they can go to a lawyer now. They don't have, they don't have to use agents now. And I understand like, okay, well, uh, it's, it, they're not, they haven't had to pay the commission. R listen to what I'm saying. It's going to be a mixed bag. You're going to have houses that the seller is offering it and some that aren't. And I believe it'll reverse and we'll go right back to how we are now just because of the demand it creates. Unless they eliminate it and put all the listings on the same playing field, then I think they can't get rid of it because there'll always be some that are offering it and those will always sell better and for faster. You know, And so then the ones that aren't are like, well, I want to sell for better, for, for, for more and for faster. But I see where you're going with it. Here's the thing. Listen, you want to go use a flat fee lawyer that doesn't even do real estate? Maybe they're a real estate lawyer, but they're not an agent. They're not in the field. They don't understand the market to the fullest. You know, I don't know any lawyer that studies like uh, prices, houses, et cetera. But look, if you want to go use a lawyer to handle the buyer side and review the contract, knock yourself out. Like I'm cheering you on, go for it. Like what, what, what would you be worried about in this situation? Well, I don't know that I worried. I'm just wondering what the impact is because part of it is just the messaging that's come out and people, you know, don't really, I mean, we can talk about, okay, expressing our value, that type of thing, but you know, uh, ultimately going directly to that listing agent. Yes, they're not going to get what they need. They can have a, an attorney review that. But then now they kind of, you know, they've got a listing agent that understands they've got five contracts. They know what that number is. That agent will make more money. So they have incentive to take that contract. Awesome. Now there isn't a full commission paid. So I'm just wondering what you think Great. the impact could be. The same as it is now. There's not, there's not going to be any difference. Like business is unlimited, Trevor. Is it Trevor? Yes, yes. Like it's unlimited. Like if someone screws you out of the, if you feel like you got had on this buyer, whatever, there's 50 million other buyers right behind them. And some of them are going to do what you're saying. And some of them are going to work with you. And some of them are going to be loyal to you till the day you die. Never use anyone else because of the way that you serve them. I can't sit around and worry about the people that, Go do other things. Here's what I will do. I'll let them know, hey, go give it a try. I'm Like I say, I'm going to root them on. Yeah. When, Pete, when, when discount brokerages came along, I had clients that I was like great friends with. They were like family to me. We went out to dinner when they came into town. I sold them tons of condos. The discount broker just came along and they would call, like this happened several times. They call me. This is back in like, you know, seven, 16, 17, 18. They call me and they would be like, I'm just letting you know, Ricky, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, list my condo. I'm going to do it through this, you know, flat fee thing or whatever it was. I'm like, great. Like, good luck with it. I'll see. I'll try to sell it or whatever. I'll watch it. I'll, I'll show it. I'll do everything I can do to help you. Um, go for it. You know what happened to 90% of those, those clients? They came not walking, running back to me and willing to pay anything I charged. 
This happened over and over and over again. So when someone thinks the grass is greener, maybe it is, right? Maybe it is, but I know what I provide and I don't have to sit here and explain it to them. All they, I like people to learn from experience. Most people are, <laughs> they're just as hard headed as I am and they got to learn from experience. I'm happy for them to go try. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, you shouldn't do that. On the flip side, what if I'm advising them against something that is better? Think about this. What if the lawyer handling that deal, which I don't believe is better because I don't think that they offer the service I provide, but let's just say hypothetically it is better, right? And life is what you perceive. Your perception is your reality. So if they think in their head that this is what's best for them because this is going to save them some money and get the same result, that's what I want for them. See, I have to think about, Treva, relationships over transactions, not the other way around. See, I'm their friend first. And a lot of sales trainers are against what I just said. Like, nobody's your friend. This is business. Well, not me. I'm your friend first. And I want to advise you as if you're my mom or dad. And then do transaction. I'll help you. And when it's time to do a deal, I'm going to get paid. I'm going to get compensated. But not all, no, I may not if you go a different route. And guess what? I'm okay with that because my objective is for you to do what you think is best for you. And this is how, Trevor, I sold so much real estate because people knew that, guess what? I didn't need them. See, when you create, a, when you create an environment that, that shows them that you don't need them, then they feel like they need you. But yeah. if, you create an, if you create an environment where they feel like you need them, then they feel like they don't need you. So when they say, oh, I'm going over to this lawyer to do this flat fee service to review this contract, and you're like, oh, why would you do that? You know, I do all this and I do all that and that's not a good thing and they're not going to do this. You know what you sound like? You sound like you need them. And so the more and more and more you say, the more they feel like they don't need you. And that when they come to me, I'm like, go for it. And then here's the thing, you don't need them. I swear to you, I swear on everything in the world, there are 15 million other buyers right behind them, ready to do business with you and only you and not go around you and not use a lawyer. Like they're ready to roll. But we're so we're so focused on this one in front of us, we can't see the rest of them that are there that are actually going to be loyal to us. I think about it in relationship to time as well. If this buyer goes and uses this lawyer, uses this lawyer, guess what I just got back? future time that I don't have to spend on that buyer anymore that I can invest in people who actually are loyal to me, appreciate what I do, understand what my value is. And now instead of investing time into somebody who doesn't see the value, I can invest that same time into multiple other people that do. You see how it's counterproductive to just keep on like the more you try to like keep people and get people, it's counterproductive because it takes time away from the people that you don't have to get because they just want to come to you but they don't, they don't see it because this person's in front of you that doesn't value you. And yeah. they're in between. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ricky. You. I, I, I really appreciate your, your share. We have a little bit of time, limited time. And Stephanie's had her, her uh, hand up for a while. Stephanie, what's your question, my friend? Thanks, Ricky, by yeah. the way. <laughs> uh, no, no need to cut it short. I actually just wanted to say, Ricky, I saw you in Vancouver last week. And um, one thing that you said that has stuck with me since that day is talking about transformation is instantaneous. And I love that. And I appreciated that. I wanted to let you know about that. That's something that's been sticking in my mind. I have, uh, I have let myself have a limiting belief of, which I still think has some validation, but a little bit better every day kind of mentality, which is great. It's gotten me where I needed to go. But um, if you wanted to elaborate that on that, that's great. I'm sure the group would benefit from it. But I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for making that comment. And that has really stuck with me. No, I appreciate that. That was a fun event. What What exactly did you did you want me to elaborate on? Oh, I just thought the group would benefit from hearing that. And if you had anything to uh, to add to that about, I mean, everything you've talked about today, just that mindset of if we want to be doing a different business, a better business, business in a different way, we've got to change that immediately. We can't be sitting here on the sidelines saying, I'll just, you know, do one more thing every yeah. day 
And then, yeah. and then by 2028, I'll have the business that I want. Now's the time to take it. So okay. I thought everyone would yeah. just benefit from a little inspiration around that. Well, I think what you're referring to is, is, um, the transformation and, um, what the, basically what I said, guys, in, in, in just short, quick form was that transformation happens instantaneously. What takes so long is making the decision to transform. You know, when you think of an example, uh, well, the story I told on stage, you know, um, I'm 10 years sober and, uh, I tried to quit drugs and alcohol for years and years and years, but until this night happened, you know, we're almost lost at all. I woke up that next day and I was like, I'm done. And it was just an instantaneous transformation and I haven't touched anything. And so like, the actual transformational part happened instantaneously, but the decision, right? Wanting to, but not doing it. It's like I said earlier, getting fed up with your circumstances in life enough to say enough is enough with this. I'm tired of making 250 a year. I'm tired of making 500 a year. I'm tired of making a hundred a year, right? I've been making that for three years now. I'm not getting to 200, 300, 400, 500, a million. I don't see the trend happening here. I'm doing something wrong. It's time for me to switch it up. And until you get to the point where you're actually tired of wherever you are in life, you're not going to change because you got to be fed up to the point where you're willing to do anything. And that's why I talk to agents and they're like, well, I want to, I want to make three, 400, 500, a million, whatever, but I don't, I don't want to call anybody. I'm like, okay, well, you're not fed up, right? You're, you're not, you're not to the point where, you know, you're, you're unhappy with where you are enough to actually do anything. You're unhappy with it enough to say you want something different, but not enough to actually take action. So that's good that you're to the point where you're saying it, but now you got to elevate to the point where you're actually taking action around it. You know, a lot of us, what we do is we go to these Zoom calls, we watch YouTube and podcasts and read books. And what we're doing is, is we're trying to confirm our bad habits, that our bad habits are, are great. We're in a good place. And you ignore the, the key points of the speech, of the, the, the YouTube video, the book. You ignore the key points that kind of say what you're doing is not, not really in the right direction. You ignore those points. You ignore the points that, of the things that you need to transform. And you basically use it. And you do this subconsciously. You don't even realize you're doing it. You're doing it subconsciously. And you're, you're, trying, you're confirming what you're doing is you're on the right track. No, you're not. Your results are speaking. And it's okay. It's not your fault. This is what everybody goes through. But I'm just telling you, what, what your problem might be if you're stuck is that we're just doing the same stuff. We're worried about the same stuff. We're going through the same routine. We're just doing the same stuff. And it got us to a really good place. And that's the mirage is it got us here. So we think, oh, it's great. It got us here. It's got to get us to the next level. Wrong. It's not. So you got to take a step back and realize there is a next level. I don't know everything. I need new information so I can do new things, so I can achieve new, new heights. And then it comes back to self-development. So it's what I started out with. Read every morning and, and, and find that one thing in that book. I told you guys what it was for me today. It was your obsessions eventually become your possessions. I obsess over helping agents get to a seven-figure income. And that's what I do. I've got agents that have reached seven-figure incomes all over the place. I obsess about that. So my obsessions have eventually become my possessions. Same thing with you. If you're, if you're scared of this or scared of that, then those obsessions prevent you from doing, it's called anxiety. You have anxiety around things. Let's just call it calling people. Let's just use that example. You have anxiety around calling people. And then it's not fear because fear, guys, is something that where there's clear and present danger. That's like if an alligator is fixing to bite you. That's fear. You're scared. This is worried about something that may or may not happen in the future. That's not fear. It's anxiety. And the problem is, is we're allowing anxiety to, to, to be the thief of all of our dreams. It's preventing you from taking actions based on an imaginary outcome that you think might happen that won't happen, by the way. When you call people, they're super nice. They love you. They want to do business with you. It's insane. But you're allowing that anxiety to steal everything that's good out of your life. And guess what? Life is short. And so that's why I'm glad, was it Stephanie, that you kind of brought up the fact that, yeah, 
I want to have a great business, but I don't have to wait a couple years. I can do it right now. Guys, you can literally go call property owners right now and pick up 10 leads today. Today, you could have 10, 10 new leads you've never talked to today. But you're, you're, you know, you're not. Why? I, I don't know. Because when I was selling real estate, that's what I did. I'd pick up 10 leads every day. And that's why my business grew faster than anybody else's because nobody else would do that but me. And so my business exploded while everybody else has stayed the same. Why? Because I understood what moved the needle, having conversations with people who may buy and sell real estate in my market. Thank you so much, Ricky. Uh, goodness, I could listen to you all day long. That This has been so, so powerful. Um, to kind of close it up, Don, did you want to say something about next week? Yes, I do. But uh, first, Ricky, thank you again for taking your time with us. We really appreciate it. And uh, now, uh, Tom Daves, what, uh, I think Ricky would echo your comments. So I want, I want you to do your inspiration perspiration when we wrap. But uh, what I wanted to do is share that next uh, week, next Wednesday, we'll have the author of B1, Jimmy Rex, with us. And um, we look forward to having you there. Uh, it should be a fantastic share. And uh, Tom, why don't you wrap it up? Okay. Let me, let me add to Tom for everybody here. I'm doing a challenge next week. Yeah. Set, yeah. More, list, set more listing appointments challenge. Mm -hmm. It's going to be four days. It's going to be a, it's going to be a zoom call um, Monday through Thursday. Guys, just go to set more listing And I'm going to transform every, the whole, the whole premise is, is to completely transform your entire life. So I'm excited about it. That's going to start Monday. So go to setmorelistingappointments.com and check that out and let me know if you have any questions. Awesome. Hey, Ricky, thanks again. If anyone wants to get a hold of you, uh, what's the best channel? Instagram. Okay. Yeah, just cool. DM me on Instagram. That's the best place to get me. Awesome. Hey, well, thank you so much, Ricky. Thanks you all for being here. Um, now we all got our inspiration. We got our obsession. Now's the time to put in the perspiration. Let's go, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a great day. See you soon.